These shapes are slightly more complex than the other shapes we found the volumes of, which have been prisms. Now, first of all, if you think about sphere, I know they're the second ones, this, the last type of shape that appears here, but if I talk about a sphere because they are their own formula, um, you will be given this formula, okay, which is useful to know. And the formula for a sphere is 4 thirds times pi r cubed. Okay, you were given that one. You are not given the formula for the volume of a cone or a pyramid. And that's because the volume of a cone or a pyramid is very closely related to the prism with the same base. So you see this cone here with a base that's a circle diameter 12 centimetres and a height of 13. Imagine that being extended out to a cylinder with base radius 12 centimetres and height 13. The cone is one third of the prism. In the same way, with this pyramid, imagine it being a cuboid And that pyramid has a volume that is one third the cuboid. Okay, you'll be expected to remember that and you're expected to remember how to find the volume of the prism. So you could be asked to do these questions without any formula given. If we were in class, I would make a huge mess um, and show you how, if I have a cone, it takes three of them to fill up a cylinder, and if I have a pyramid, it takes three of them to fill up a cuboid, etc. You can't do that, um, but maybe we'll have a look at that when we're next back in class. Just ask me to make a mess with rice, and I'll know exactly what you mean. Right, so, first of all, let's have a look at this, this cone here. Um, so to find, imagine first of all, imagine it's a cylinder. So the cylinder would be the base area times the height. Base area is circle. So that's pi r squared times by the height. So pi times the radius. Remember the radius is halfway across. That is six squared times by the height, which is 13, okay? I'm not even gonna bother calculating that because I know that it's not a cylinder, it's a cone, which means that the cone is pi times six squared times 13 divided by three. And that's what I'm gonna put in my calculator. So I've got pi times six squared times 13 divided by 3. That gives me 156 pi. Um, it doesn't want that, it wants it to decimal places. So press SROD and we want it to one decimal place. That's going to be 490.1. Okay, we have another cone. It's on its side. That doesn't change anything. So first of all, think about it as a cylinder. So a cylinder is circle times the circle times by the height, which is pi r squared times by the height, which is going to be pi times, this time it has given us the radius, 5 squared times by, I know it's not really the height, it's the length, but just imagine it's standing on its bottom, um, 14. But I'm not going to put that into my calculator, I'm going to think about the cone. The cone is exactly the same as a cylinder, but it's divided by 3. I'm going to put that into my calculator, which is pi, that's a random number, pi times 5 squared times 14 divided by 3. 84.58, round it to one decimal place, 84.6. Okay. 
here, moving on to my square based pyramid. So my prism is going to be the area of my square, my, the area of my rectangle multiplied by the height. The rectangle is um, width times depth times by the height. Um, so the width is 11 times by the depth is 5 times by the height is 12. But I'm not going to work that out because we are interested in the pyramid. And the pyramid is the same as the prism, the same as the cuboid, but divided by 3. No pesky decimals there. Okay, we now have a triangular base pyramid. So, first of all, think about a triangular prism, which would be the area of the triangle times by the height. Okay, so the, the triangle at the bottom, it's really important to make sure we're looking at the base here, is 7 times 8 divided by 2. times by the height of the pyramid, um, or the prism, if we think about it that way. So it's going to be 7 times 8 divided by 2 times by 5. But then, of course, we're not interested in the prism, we're interested in the pyramid, which means it's 7 times 8 over 2 times 5. You can do this in, in several steps if you want to, that's absolutely fine. So we can think about 7 times 8, we can then divide that by 2, we can times it by the 5, and then we can divide it by the 3. 46.6 um, recurring. Now remember, if it's 0.6 recurring, then it's 66666, which means that actually this is going to round to 46.7. Really sneaky, that one. I bet some of you would have put 46.6. Uh, have a look at the calculator. Can you see the dot above the 6? Really important you pay attention to that. Right, on to our sphere and our hemisphere. Um, when it's a circle, it's called a, a semicircle. And when it's a sphere, it's called a hemisphere. You might have heard that in geography. We live in the northern hemisphere. But let's look at the whole sphere for now. Remember what I said, you're probably given this formula, so we've got 4 thirds times pi r squared. So we are going to do 4 thirds times pi times the radius squared. The radius is 1.5 cubed, not squared. Ignore the squared. Um, and I'm just going to put that straight into my calculator. Um, using the fraction button, 4 thirds. Don't forget to go across, otherwise it's all going to be in the denominator of a fraction times by pi times by 1.5 cubed, okay, not squared, cubed, um, and that will give me 14.137 or 14.1. Okay. Now, if your calculator does not have a fraction button, or a cube button, or a pi button, we can get quite close to this by doing this. First of all, let's do 4 divided by 3. Now, my calculator is a little bit posh, so it says that. But if you don't have a posh calculator, it will say 1.33333. Okay, leave that in your calculator, um, and then times it by pi. Don't know what pi is? More for you. Um, just remember the first three digits. They're usually enough. 3.141415967. Anyway, yeah. um, equals, we're getting closer. And then times it by the radius cubed. If you haven't got a cube button, just times it by the radius. And times it by the radius. And times it by the radius. And you'll see that the answer I've got is really close to my answer using proper pi. That shows you that if you forget your calculator that's good and has pi on it, and you have a pi less calculator, you can just use 3.14 and you'll almost certainly get the answer right. Make sure you show that you're using 3.14, and examiners are nice about that kind of thing. So, now this is a hemisphere, it is not a sphere. Let's pretend it's a whole sphere. So if it was a whole sphere, it would be 4 thirds times 
times by pi times by the radius cube. What's the radius of this hemisphere? Radius, middle, the outside. Two. Two cubed. Okay. That would be the whole sphere. Do I want the whole sphere? No, I do not. I want a hemisphere. Which means I'm going to do my four thirds. I'm going to times it by pi. I'm going to times it by two cubed. And then I'm going to half it. Again, that's going straight in my calculator. Four thirds. Oh, see what I mean? Make sure you go off your fraction, otherwise it will be the denominator. Times pi times two cubed divided by two. Again, make sure you go across after the cubed, otherwise you're going to end up with that. Equals 16 thirds pi, as useful as that is. I'd much rather have 16.75, which is 